What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Y'all go ahead and hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Come on in, man. Happy Monday. I think today Monday. Today Monday, right? Yeah, today Monday. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm all over the place. Oh, man. <laughs> I was watching the women's basketball. Uh, I was watching that Iowa uh, LSU, man. Oh, Caitlin Clark went out there and did her thing, man. I like her last name, man. She a hooper. She a hooper just like me. Sent home LSU, but we ain't here to talk about that. Uh, come on in the room, man. The fam uh, be up. Uh, and we will uh, – we got a lot to talk about tonight, man. A whole lot to talk about, actually. Um, but nevertheless, man, uh, it's it's a good Monday. I don't know why I keep forgetting the day, man. I, I, did, I did make it home. I just want to say, man, thank you to everybody who have uh, shown the support for me and my family. We still dealing. Um, my niece is, um, she got a long way to go, man. She got a long way to go, but she's still fighting, though. She ain't checked out, man. She ain't checked out. I got a chance to see her today. Not looking good, but God got the last say so, man. And he, uh, God is good all the time. All the time, he is good. I feel good, man. I feel good. I feel a lot better. I, had, I got a chance to ask a lot of questions. A lot of the things that I did have on my mind. I was able to uh, ask the doctors and the nurses, and uh, I feel pretty good about it. I mean, she's in a she got a long hill, she got a long hill to climb, and um, but listen, man, if 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 I ain't on here saying, you know, that she met a maker, so that's obviously, uh, I guess, uh, I guess it's good news, you know. So um, we're gonna take it one day at a time, the family and I, and uh, and we uh we gonna keep it positive, man. So. She has some challenges between now and the last show. Um, some serious challenges, man. She coded. She shook back. <laughs> hey, man, man. She, hey, she got that clock blood running in her, man. She on. She ain't got no other way but to, you know, what I'm saying, fight. You know, she gonna fight, man. She scratch and claw, and she's still with us, man. So, you know, um, it was it was just good to finally make it home and 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 being there to, uh, to be with my family and be able to see and. Uh, I just uh, I left feeling a lot better than I did when I before I came. So um, it, and it don't have anything to do with with um, her condition per se. I would just say this, man. I was just thinking this is what this is what God put in my mind. I'm gonna say this and then we'll keep we'll get it rolling, man. Um, man, what God don't do is He never reaches out to us and asks us what we think about what He got going on with His stuff, and we are His stuff. So whatever He decides to do with His stuff is His, is his call. 
we at his mercy. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he decided that, you know, hey, your time is up. Your time is – you really – your time has already been decided before we get to it. We just find out about what he decided to do when that time comes. So uh, that's the mindset I have. I was able to uh, approach it that way. I'm going to keep it that way. Um, I was telling somebody, I said, I'm in my faith bag. Not so much as that I have faith is in in a sense of like everything is gonna be okay with her. Really, I don't know. That's that's that could go either way. You know, my faith is is not hinged on what he could do for me, but more so about who he is as a royal. So that's that's really what it comes down to. Doesn't matter the circumstance of the situation. Uh we gotta be faithful at all times, man, and uh know that um our days. Good days and bad days are not defined by how it affects you because you're not the center of the world like that. He is. So it's his program. We just we just little pawns, you know what I'm saying? And that and, and if that much, you know, we really just him, you know, in a different manifestation or not, or not man. So anywho, here we are, man. It's JSU live sports chat with Casey 1400 and the crew, man. Um the crew will be up. I don't expect this to be a long show. Yes, we still are collecting for our donation, man, for our women's basketball donation. Now, listen, let me go ahead and put this up here real quick. I'm going to just get this out of the way from the onset. Listen, y'all. Yes, 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 yes. Our women's basketball coach, Coach Tamika Reed, interviewed for another job. It's what she's supposed to do. She's supposed to do a due diligence. You know, people see this and people, listen, man, I just want to say this to us, man. We have to stop. Listen, Twitter is not a real place. Social media is not a real, it's not really real like that. Um, we have a great athletic director, a great administration, and they're doing their due diligence, man. They've done their part, you know what I'm saying? And uh, what I do know is, is that, we um there's definitely an offer on the table for Coach Tamika Reed. Uh that's greater than what it was that uh, the contract that ended. I'm gonna just get that on out the way. Let's get that out the way early because people want to sit up here and act like I just it's annoying, you know what I'm saying? Like on one hand, we'd be like, Oh man, we got the best AD in the game. And then on the other hand, you somebody say, Well, man, he needed to do he needed to do, 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 do. like we say it as if because we don't see it. We act as if because we don't see it on Twitter or on social media that it's not happening. Like, you got to be the biggest idiot in the world to think that Jackson State, of all people, would not be the first motherfucker to make a, 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 the best offer he could possibly make to keep his coach. Like, why do y'all think that, man? Why do y'all think that way? That's a rhetorical question. That's not a legitimate question. Why you think the way you think? And I'm not asking for a question. I'm, just, I mean, I'm not asking for an answer. I just get on Twitter, man, and I see people just random raving and it just be like, bro, you wrong. And you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Jackson State is not going to conduct its business of um, administrations and contract negotiations and all that type stuff. And then turn around and report it to Twitter so you motherfuckers can feel better about it. No, that's not how it works. And now when I say you I'm talking about the outsider. So nobody from Jackson State think I'm talking about them. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, you know, F, anyway, let me leave that alone. But, um, yeah, I just sit there and be like, do you really, people really, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, 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 it's funny because it's like, damn, you really can't get outside your own thought process, can you? Like, you really feel like because you don't see it, that it does not happen, that it's not going on. Can't do nothing for you, man. Can't do nothing for you. You know, so I just, you know, we good. And let me say this, man. Let me go back to this. Let me this. Y'all know what this is. Y'all know what this is. What's up, TD? This right here is a is is the greatest sign that you have a healthy, successful program at your university we are an fc division one double a hbcu and if we really want to get down to it we are at really the bottom of the food chain when it comes to the fbs or, or division one athletics 
we're at the bottom of the food chain uh, when it comes to just say athletic budgets because of for various different reasons. I'm not gonna get into all that. But what I will say is this: if you are on this level and you have a coach that big time programs are seeking to interview that tells you that you have a great program. It's almost like we don't want to win. No, 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 no. TD, we want to win, but we don't want to win so much to where we lose our, like we get uncomfortable with success. And that that's a sign of people who are being bottom feeders. That's a bottom feeders mentality. When you are constantly afraid of becoming a victim of your success. When in actuality, if Coach Tamika Reed does decide to leave Jackson State, it would be solely because she wants to. It's not going to be because of negligence or lack of due diligence on the part of the administration or the athletic director. That's not, that's not going to happen. That's not the case. I can tell you that confidently. So I've always said, even with her having her, having her on, it was a great show. But it's going to come down to what she wants to do. That's the beauty of having power within your success. You can be successful to a point to where you get to dictate and call the shots and do what you want to do. And if she chooses to stay at Jackson State, hey, man, at least you know that she had options. Okay? So, therefore, we shouldn't have the same laws or we shouldn't have the same issues that we've had in the past where – quote unquote, potential lack of support. I'll pause right there. Let TD come on in. But while before you get going, we are, our, do, our women's basketball donation is still open. You can either donate via PayPal, Cash App, Zelle, or Givelify. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling. What's up, TD? What's good, man? You got it? Just listening? Um... Just listen to me, man. I, I just think it's a situation, man, where people is kind of afraid the unknown um, situation where you finally get to a point to where you win and you got something established, something good going for you. You don't want to mess up because you were kind of intimidated or not sure what's going to happen going forward. So, you know, I, I think it's more so of a place of uh, uncertainty, you know. But okay, T Dub. What's popping? Yeah, what's so yeah? What's up, Mr. Brown? How you doing? Well, I agree with that, TD. But at the same time, you still have to account for the fact that if you wasn't successful, others wouldn't seek to they wouldn't seek to come get what you got. It, it happens in every single thing that you do. It's an right. ecosystem. Even in nature, in nature, um. The king of the jungle is what the lion. It's a lot of you know shit that rolls uphill, bro. This particular insect is eaten by this particular amphibian, and that amphibian is eaten by that reptile, and that reptile is eaten by that animal, and that you follow what I'm saying. And eventually, it continues to get to a point to where the big dog is like, "Hey, I need you to get fat because you' about to be my lunch." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So everything you done done, you become the lunch. And that's just how it goes. But listen, here's the reality of it. If you ain't got a good program, people ain't seeking. Let me ask you this. Um, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but go ask Alcorn or um, I want to use Alcorn. Let's just, just go use uh, any coach. Um, go ask Gremlin. You know, Gremlin had a pretty decent run. How many opportunities does Gremlin uh, head basketball coach have right now in this offseason? if any, and they had a really good season. So what I'm telling you is, is that you only have opportunities based off of your success. That's how that works. And our coach has done a phenom phenomenal job over the past six seasons, five or six seasons to uh, establish that she is a pretty dominant winner. You know what I mean? Five straight regular season SWAC titles, uh, three SWAC tournaments, three head coach of the year uh, in the SWAC. I mean, she's done a hell of a job, man. And of course we want to keep her in place. 
And of course, Jack State has made an offer to Coach Tamika Reed to try to keep her in the role. And of course, it's so you know she's going to continue to interview for positions. But we act like the cost, that's the cost of doing business. It's the cost of being successful. Why wouldn't she? TD, I do it too. I don't care how much money I make or what company I work for, bro. The opportunity out there that I think is pretty solid, I'm gonna fucking interview for it, bro. Well, I don't I could have no intention on leaving. I'm gonna go put my best foot forward and interview for that job because you never can tell. I think what has to happen now, um, you know. We always, I mean, we've shown the appreciation, the love, and the respect. You know, the coach Reed has um, the things that has, she has accomplished. And again, no decision has been made. But I think going forward, what we have to do as JSU as a whole, Ken, is establish that winning tradition again. And where she has the program right now, if she decides to, uh, Take our talents elsewhere and you know and trade new waters, bring someone in who continue that tradition. Uh so it'll be a same situation where she leaves, we go out and get somebody else coach. And then they school are going to go get somebody right. else. So <laughs> the thing about right. So so once that thing get established, get the rolling, you know, and that person bring in the same type of success. Then your program continue to be established, you and, and you develop yourself as a blue blood out, you know, um, outside the swag. Then you know people start getting a little more coming because they start trusting the system more. Right now, you know, we as fans are like, like I said, deal with a lot of uncertainties, unknown, and so much has has transpired with the school and sports uh, administration and so forth over the last few years. Man, it's just been a lot. Um, there's been heavy weight on people show who really love the university in, in the sporting world. So it just like like I said, I, I it's just a situation of the unknowns, man. So uh hey, me, I I, I don't call the shots, man. So I just watch the ball go in. No, we don't, man. Uh neither neither do we. Uh we don't we don't do that. Uh but at the same time. Uh, we do have a platform and we do. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, bro. Or, you know, like, don't take this in any way if you're watching the show. But TD, I had somebody actually hit me up today and was like, man, what do you what do you think our chances of actually renegotiating a new contract for Coach Reed? What do you think our chances are? I was like, we just had Coach Reed on the show. Did you watch the show? Oh, man, I didn't get a chance to watch the show. I said, well, you should. The fact that you are asking me what I think about the chances is because you're on Twitter and you're seeing the commentary. You're seeing the you're seeing platforms or pages use this contract situation. They're using her contract scenario and oh, free agent. She interviewed here. News is breaking all this stuff. You see it out there because it is going to create views clicks likes shares comments it's engagement that's what it's gonna do and we have to be okay with that and we can't read that stuff and and or watch that stuff or or listen to it and then start to doubt the very thing that we say that we believe we either believe we have a good athletic director or we don't and i'm gonna just start i'm gonna stop right there with that i ain't going no further we either believe we have a good athletic director. See, we can't say we got a good athletic director and then turn around when it's time for him to make an – we call him the coach whisperer. We did all kind of shows, singing the praises of A.D. Robinson, and all of a sudden, because people don't know what's going on, they assume that nothing is happening, and that, my friend, is a sign of self-centeredness. And what that means is, is that you believe your own thoughts. And you think because you thought it that it's true when in actuality, just because you thought it, that don't have nothing to do with what is actually going on. There is a such thing is your ass ain't in the loop. You don't know what's going on and ain't nothing being reported. So therefore, there's nothing to say. You can only hope and just wait, just like the majority of us do. Well, key, well, well key, I, I think you said a key thing uh, when you said not being in the loop. Here's the thing, man. Um, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I say on the average, 
but most people don't keep up with uh the chain of command that deep so a lot of people might not even know exactly who caused the shot and i think that's what this platform and other platforms that we have with jsu uh with, with doc and she loved these you know those different platforms come in to educate the public because what it is man a lot of us just don't know bro in 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 with our work schedule and different things that we have going on we're just looking for the finished product we don't we, we don't see those players out there you know saying in that 80 90 degree sun running laps running bleaches doing up downs you know what i'm saying bumping into each other we see the shiny uh pretty blue and white uniforms on the field on saturday or, or sunday you know, and we see the finished product, but we don't see the blood, sweat, and tear. We don't see what's going on in the spring. We don't see the knocking them heads. We, you know what I'm saying? We don't see the concussions. We don't see, you know, what's going on on the everyday life to make this team to be on the field in the fall. So it's kind of the same way with this. I mean, we just don't know the path. That's why it's important, you know what I'm saying, what you are doing with this platform to make sure that we're here to educate people who don't know. Because what it boils down to, man, a lot of times, you know, it's just unknown, bro. I say this, and Zoe, what's up, bro? I'm going to say what this. Up, up, on in. The point is, TD, everything you said was, was, was spot on, bro. It only becomes a problem when that person who is in the unknown begin to think that their assumptions and their thoughts are the actual truth. Mm. That's when it gets dangerous because that's where misinformation comes in. That's when people and then you know people have agendas, man. People want to see coach. Let's let's make no mistakes about this. The swag won't coach Tamika read the league because she's been kicking their behinds ever since. She's been in for the last five years. Yeah, a couple of teams done got her. Only four swag teams done got her in five seasons. I'm talking about four, one time in five seasons. So with that being said, of course they wanted to leave. But I Paul, Oh, come on in this thing. What's up, bro? What's up? What's up, kid? What's up, TD? What's up, the I love family? Look, I'm, y'all, y'all said enough. I'm just gonna say this. All right. Coach Reed was just on this platform last week. All right. She was. I'm gonna ask y'all a question. All right. Take Tamika Reed out of this equation that I'm about to use. I don't care what sport it is. If any coach at Jackson State or any institution is winning at the clip that she's winning at, do you honestly think said institution is just going to let her contract expire? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, just bear with me now. No matter the sport, any coach, any place who's winning at the rate that she's winning at, do you honestly think they're just going to let her or here or his or her contract just expire? Do you honestly think that's going to happen? Follow me here. Now, add to the fact, now I'm going to add to make a read back to the equation or any coach for that matter whether it's an alum or someone who's beloved in their hometown and has done what they've done for said institution and has personal relationships outside of role as head coach. Because now we're talking about outside relationships and just add that to it. Now, granted, we know our place in the lexicon. So I'm going to just go ahead and see it since we talking, we family, it's a family meeting. So, yes, if Tennessee Volunteers fired their coach, I'm going to say it. So, yes, you know, if the Tennessee Volunteers actually came after Coach Reed, Texas State can't keep them. Let's just keep it a book. Let's just keep it a book, right? <laughs> we can't offer what they can offer, right? But that doesn't mean black people, because right. we love to devalue us, that doesn't mean that we don't have anything extra to offer. And I'm not just talking about money. Jackson State has other tie-ins and other benefits that some other schools can't offer because this is home. This is family. So we have other built-ins, but we still can, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to really get into stuff because that's not our place. And Ken and I, we don't get ahead of the school. 
But do you really think she don't have a contract off from Jackson State? Like, really? And for all those people who hear me say, well, Jackson State really can't offer her nothing, how do you know? How do you know? You don't have any proof to say that we can't. Now, granted, what you'll say is, because I even saw the dollar amount that they say that she's making now. That's not totally true. You know the dollar amount that you saw? That's what she's paid for by the school and the institution. Because you, all you have to do is a public uh, records, you know, a public records request, and we have to provide that information. It doesn't mean it's all that she's paid. So again, same thing we talked about with Coach Prime. Everybody thought, "Oh, Coach Prime makes this," and we said, "Ah, ah, ah not so fast, my friend. He actually makes more than that." But you're going to get what's on public record. So what I'm saying is stop trying to devalue black people and understand that Jackson State is growing. And even what, what we're doing, yes, we have limitations, but this is Jackson State. We know we can't compare to what a power five institution, especially a blue blood, if they want to come get her. Hell, I, <laughs> as me and the kid probably both attest and say, if Tennessee offer her uh, a job, she'd be a fool enough to take it. And I'm, I'm gonna, gonna, and and I'm, if Tennessee I'm, offered her the job, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna I'm gonna volunteer to move. Help you the damn U-Haul. That's what I'm saying. Be a fool that thing. <laughs> but don't sit here and think, oh, she interviewed with Tulane. Let me tell you something. She's supposed to interview. Yeah. You're supposed to. You know why? Because that AD or whoever she has a relationship to have that interview, you never know what can happen five years from now, 10 years from now. You Good always point. take that interview. Yep. So just yeah, because you take an interview does not mean that you're, oh, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm a free agent by Easter. Man, look, y'all can read it today. Well, however y'all want to read it today. All I'm going to say is, at what point hey, it was a good you take, right? sit here and cling to the words or the letters of the clarion ledger, especially from J.T. Keith? He's just doing the job. He's doing what he's supposed to do. But I'm not going to get long-winded, man. Just understand things are in place. Things are working. And right now we're sitting good. Do I look worried? No. And I know Coach Reed all my life. So, uh, well, almost all my life since I was since I was about six, but still, um, but now we just relaxed. We all right. I mean, I don't know if y'all paid attention, but if you want to do yourself a favor, go back and watch that show when she was on here. She kind of hinted at something if you go back and watch it. Yeah, but yeah, so so man, I. Like I said, we I just wanted to get that 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 I wanted to get that one out there early, man. Uh yeah, she did interview. She made interview jobs. There's a couple other jobs out there, like Joe said, Tennessee out there, Miami's out there. Um, what else is out there? A couple other joints. Uh Utah State. There's a lot of stuff out there. But at the same time, um, I, I love the fact that she is interviewing because if she chooses Jackson State, it's only gonna fire me up even more. And we're not we're not waiting to see what decide to happen or this this and that. We're gonna keep the donation is open, man. We're still rocking and rolling. So just so y'all know, man, go ahead and continue to bring those donations in. We're gonna try to make it happen. But uh, let's get started real quick in these preliminaries, real quick. We do have a foundation, friends of KC 1400 Inc. Uh, if you want to donate to Givelify, go to Givelify. You'll see this logo and you see this mission statement. All donations will be tax deductible. Uh, shout out to the Hattiesburg Group, our uh, partner, Canon Toyota. Shout out to Billy Clay. And uh, Greg over in uh, Vicksburg. Shout out to Tim, as well as Timothy Poe, uh, Auto Masters. Uh, go to www.automasters06.com. Uh, uh, shoot them a text at, I mean, at 601-927-7794, or you can give them a call. They got any, they can find what you're looking for, man. Uh, these are our partners. These are our channel sponsors, and we appreciate the support uh, from Auto Masters. Uh, Earl Mulligan shirts are still out there, man. Appreciate the couple of orders we did get. Uh, let's go ahead and get those sold up. Galen, you asked for a size small, I think. Yeah, it's a small out there in white for sure. I saw it with my own two eyes. So if you're looking to get that small, man, y'all go ahead. <laughs> those shirts go to kc1400media.com. Grab them T-shirts, man. Let's get these shirts sold, man, by, by uh, for Mr. Mulligan. Give Mr. Mulligan the damn ball, man. Let's keep it rolling. This week in sports at Jackson State, April 1st, obviously was the day you had men's and women's tennis versus uh, um, NSU. And I think we we wound up beating Nickel State uh, today. The women did uh, baseball at UAPB tomorrow. So tomorrow we got a UP, UAPBs on the third. We got uh, softball at Southern uh, fifth, sixth, 
and uh, we got we got track and field. At the, I'd invite softball versus Bethune Cookman, baseball versus Bethune Cookman. Then on the six, you got again softball and baseball uh, versus Bethune Cookman. And then on the six, you also have the blue and white spring game. So you got a lot going on. Men and women's tennis versus Alcorn at the GSU uh, Tennis Center. Pull up if you want to catch that game. I know it's a lot going on on Saturday, but you definitely want to pull up and tune in, man. Uh, if, something I'll come back to when we come back to. I want to show, I, that, that's something that I actually grabbed. I, I really want to mention that. But before, you know what, before we even go there, I, I know I have it right there. I come back to it. Uh, Vaughn reached out to me. Uh, shout out to Vaughn. Uh, she reached out to me this week again, you know, the third through the seventh student. Athletic, athlete community service on Wednesday. Thursday, you got the uh, golf classic, the W.C. Gordon, Ashley Robinson golf uh, tournament. Friday, you got a JSU donor uh, reception, 7 p.m. Um, and then on Saturday, April 6, 3 p.m., 3 p.m., you got the, the blue and white game. Now, some specifics from um, – they're going to uh, sign up if you want to sign up for the tournament. And, of course, you got the spring game on the six. So here's some specifics from Bond. The spring game information for those that are planning on attending the spring game. Um, Jack State holds his annual spring football game April 6th, this Saturday. Kickoff is set for 3 p.m. Admission is free to the game, and gates will be open on the visitor side only. So you'll only get gate access through the visitor side. Limited spots for RV and car tailgate are available on a first-come, first-served basis with the lot opening at 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on game day. RV tailgating is available at $150, and car tailgating is at $75. The general parking lot will be available for parking at $10 on game day. So on Saturday, $10 on game day. Uh, but let, just so you guys know, the gates will open. Even though the game is at 3 p.m., the gates will open at 1 p.m. Oh, wow. Southern baseball beat uh, LSU 12-7. 12-7. So 1 p.m. it's open. Um, game is free, but the parking is not. Uh, we do have the fundraise on the 24th. We did touch on that. Kickoff time for the UNLV game is uh, now Thursday, 7 p.m. And then don't forget to donate to the Boom on the road to the Tournament of Roses Parade, man. Shout out to the Boom. That's it for the preliminaries. All right, let's roll, y'all. Right. Well, big up the SU baseball. It's a big win right there, man. Oh yeah, and um, uh, preliminaries, man. Look, little white week, man. It's finally here, man. It's a big damn deal. We actually finally get started on some dog on football. Here for it. Can't wait to see it, man. The weather's supposed to cooperate. It'd be pretty good, man. Ready for it, man. Uh, spring football. Take football however we can get it. But also, man, golf I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, I won't come close to to killing the AD this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a bit funny last year, bro. And um, it doesn't even feel like it's been a year already. But that's that's crazy. But um, now, man, looking forward to this week, man. Um, and uh, looking forward to hooking up with you guys too, man. We enjoyed ourselves last week, so hope we have a good turnout. And uh, just go for that, man. Good to see all the storylines that we talked about with the team, whether that's linebacker play, quarterback play, see the, how, how the O-line is coming, see player movement, you know what I'm saying, on set O-line. But, Ken, I got to tell you, man, I'm also looking forward to the game, man, watching the recruits that come in here. Got a lot of guys coming in for that spring game, so. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, we're going to be busy with Tiger Talk that day, man. We got a lot of interviews, TD. I uh, just thought – uh, let you in on the loop. Corgay was the itinerary. It's going to be a lot of young men in town uh, visiting Jackson State during that weekend. So we're going to try to get as many interviews knocked out as possible. Looking forward to that. You're right, Zoe. Oh, and I I know it's not SWAC related, but it's HBCU related. So I figured I'd mention it because the announcement actually came this morning with the uh, the uh, Northeast Conference and the MEAC actually uh, announced a merger this morning. So uh, kind of different to see what that's going to be like. So I guess it's now the SWAC is the long standing D1 HBCU conference. Um, but uh, it's an associate membership partnership, but it's a, still a slight merger. So just want to make that announcement to those who didn't know. 
But uh, yeah, man, looking forward to uh, everything that's going on this weekend, man. I hope to, I hope everybody come out, man. If you could, man, please get the Jacks, man. We need a good turnout for this spring game. I think it will be. Definitely think it will be. Appreciate the donations, y'all. Y'all keep them coming in. Got a couple of donations. We're a little right at uh, 11,000 so far. Uh, so we can go as far as y'all want to go it. Go about it. And we let's keep it rolling, man. Let's keep it rolling. I thought that was fake. What you thought was fake? Oh, part of the, the merger. Okay. Good deal, man. Joe, was that April Fool's <laughs> post? No. What post are you talking about? No, the announcement that the MIAC and the uh, NEC merged. No. Oh, they did. Okay. That ought to be interesting, man. That ought to be interesting. So, a um, couple things, man, I'll get to. I I I'll finish up with that last slide. Um, um, got some thoughts on my mind, but I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the spring game. Spring game is this week. Um, get a chance to finish up practice, uh, see how they prepare and get the game. And uh, just got to be ready, man. Portal is going to be open April the 5th, 10th. And uh, from the 15th through the 30th, never can tell, man. Just got to go put that dog in, go put that work in. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, but yeah, man, that's pretty much uh, what I had on my mind. I got one more thing I do want to touch on, and I do want to expand on that. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I just got a good a good compliment. Uh, Say we're doing great, man. Thank you, thank you for the support. I appreciate all of that good stuff, man. Uh, I guess you know where we at right now is is that we we're going into the um we're finishing up basketball you know ideally what we do want to do is we want to get coach mo on here as well and let him come on and talk about his program and his trajectory and what he's thinking as far as you know advancing his uh his program you know we had coach amiga reed and uh loving this loving loving love getting the coaches on absolutely love getting the coaches on uh but this week is blue and white week td Thoughts on the spring game, man. I know you're going to be out there. We're going to be all out there, man, looking and scoping and scouting and taking notes and frowning and smiling and all that old good stuff, man. Get your, just get your key takes, man. Like I said, just so everybody know, I don't play, I don't anticipate this being a long show. I am tired. I really am tired, by the way. I'm going to try to uh, get through this show, and then I'm going to get me some rest, man. So I had a long time traveling uh, from – the West Coast over here to the to the crib, and uh, only had about two two hours of sleep. So I just want to put that out there. This ain't this definitely ain't gonna be no three hour joint. That ain't gonna be, that ain't gonna happen. Uh, if you do, I'm gonna be looking like Zoe on the screen. With all due respect, <laughs> <laughs> y'all gonna see the back. Y'all gonna see the top of my head just like this right here. And trust me, if I'm like this, I ain't looking for nothing. I'm and, and listen, just so you know, I know he on here too. Man, boom, did me so dirty. He did me so dirty, man. Oh, he sent it to me too. Hey, Boom sent me a clip of Zoe. He he cropped Zoe out to you. Man, all you saw was all you, hey, all you saw was head like this. Boom did me so dirty, man. <laughs> you didn't see nothing but the back of his brain. <laughs> man. Oh. Hey, uh, hey guys, I want to, and I, I might do this a couple times, uh, because because it's, it's near and dear to my heart, but, um. Hope she don't mind. And like I said, I, I said one time, and and I repeat it again upon her uh, departure. But uh, he and Zo, I have a church member of mine who's uh, about to leave Jackson and move back up north. I want to say Chicago. Uh, yeah, her, her family has called her home, man. She um. Talking about Rose, are you? Nah, I'm talking, talking about my good friend here, man. Um, Verna Hobbs, man. Shout out to her, man. She uh, it, and and what this tell me, man. You know, we definitely have to continue to do what we're doing and get more younger people involved, pick up the slack. Uh, she was a strong 
Uh, she rolled with the um, the fanatic strongly Ken Zo. Uh -huh. She's been on the Blue Bingo for 18 years. Ooh. She never missed a game except Southern. And, and and that, you know when they were playing in New Orleans, she didn't miss any of those. She just missed one and went back to Southern. Uh, she was the business manager for five years, executive of the board for eight years, and that's where she's been rolling, man. For the, you know for over twenty years, rolling, following those Tigers. So um, her business is the one reason she came back home from the North um, to take care of her parents, and they're no longer. With us, so her kids told her to come on back home so they can take care of her, man. So uh, she been a staple uh, in every football game, basketball game. She been a strong supporter, and she told me a couple of years ago when she when she did start missing games, she said, "Hey, I've done my part, man. It's time for y'all young people to take it and run along with it." So shout out to a long time forever, di love. JSU, Verna Hobbs, and uh, yeah. you know she's not gonna be on the side. She's not gonna be with us, you know, at, at every game this uh this coming up year, man. So shout out to her, man. Miss Hobbs, absolute hand clap to you, man. I, I I really appreciate fans like that, man. It really uh, they motivate us to do what we do, man. They make it worth our while, man. Ain't nothing like doing this stuff, man. And then you run across one of them fanatics, TD. That's been in the trenches for forever and a day, man. I got Miss Beverly Wall. I know. I, hey, Miss Wall. Uh, thank Ms. you. Wall. She sent a donation. <laughs> hey, man. Listen, I, I gotta say this, man. And I please forgive me. Please forgive me for the date. <laughs> I know she was class. I want to say he was seventy nine or seventy six or something like that. Seventy eight. It was seventy eight. I'm that was my birthday. I'm, I'm bullshit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, listen, I just thought it was I, I, I when she sent the letter, you know, she she sent a letter in a little in a little happy and she said what she said. And I was just like, man, I'm sitting there reading this and I'm like, wow, she was class of a year that I wasn't even born yet. And I'm not saying that to try to make her feel of age. It just goes to show you that they've been in the trenches for quite some time doing this loving D.I. love and, and doing their part. And that's true, man. That's absolutely true. Um and I just I appreciate that, you know I appreciate that. Jack State has a, a um and a, a much older. We have an older fan base, you know, for those that really get down and dirty in the trenches with this thing. Um, and I just I just just encourage the young the young core of alums and supporters to get active, man. Get hey man, get under the tutelage of some of these OGs and really learn how to, you know, what I'm saying prioritize this thing because. I got to be honest with y'all, man. Um, this thing go as we go. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of power, man, with what we doing, especially with this platform. Because I do have something that I did uh, mention. I stumbled across an article. I normally don't bring up stuff, man, that ain't got nothing to do with Jackson State. But it definitely has something to do with this platform. Because at the end of the day, yes, TD, I miss her. So I sat by Miss Hobbs in the reserve section at the vet. Yeah, Miss Bunny. That's right. I'm pretty sure she'll get over to a game every now and again. She ain't, she ain't gonna be gone too long. She's gonna miss it too much. She's gonna come back. Oh, yeah. Me. Oh, she she already got homecoming and you know, a different game. So yeah, she definitely gonna come back. Miss Hobbs, hey, we love you, baby. You know, go home and let your family take care of you and let them love on you and let them, you know what I'm saying, do what they want to do for you. But we uh, appreciate your uh your commitment to the I love, man, and uh, we hope to only, you know, to, to mirror that. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. Yeah, hope right. to mirror that, man. And, and listen, <clears throat> you know, it's our, our fan base for the most part. The 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 real true diehards are actually of a certain demographic, and they watch us. You know, we've long done the data even here. You know, um, and we need to segue that to make our fan base younger. But the difference is. It's one thing to get more young people involved with JSU. The other part is for them to be as passionate. Because let me tell you, and I hate using this term, but the old heads, man, they go hard for JSU. And I mean, seriously, they go hard for JSU. And, uh, you know, I hope, like, like Ken said, you know, I hope to mirror that, you know. And she go, they go Miss Hobbs right there. I say, hey, 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 hey. 
They do, man. The the old heads go hog a JSU, and we have to mirror that. We gotta match them. And I'm we gonna say the them. older heads. Well, <laughs> older heads. I'll say that. I'm gonna say heads. Older heads. Older heads. Season. You know what? The wisdom class. I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wisdom section, but uh, they, I mean, they, but they do, they go, they go Harvard, JSU, and we need, a, we need, uh, we need more of our younger base to match their effort, match their energy. It's one thing to be a part of it, but to actually, you know, match that, and we need that, you know what I'm saying? Um, hell, if I can get everybody even be like me and Ken, because again, it's just we need that though, and that's how you carry on the tradition, that's how you keep all the other traditions alive. Uh, we need that to bleed over into uh, you know, what I'm saying our younger alums and younger younger fans. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, hey guys, Mr. Brown. Uh, oh, shout oh, out to Mr. Brown, senior man. He he. Uh, spring game not being televised, is it? No, not that I know of, man. We're gonna be in that thing though. We're gonna we're gonna come back and tell you about it. <laughs> 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 if you ain't there, I'm sorry for you. But no, nah, man, it's gonna be uh be cool, man. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely, definitely looking forward. Now, man, you asked me uh about the spring game. Um uh, first of all, I, I hope everyone uh is able to to make it out. You know, if you have any questions, you know, what wh whatever you need to learn about the game, it's it's gonna be it's a good thing for a good a, a good situation for teaching for learning you know about the game because it's not such fast pace to where you know you can see what's going on you have the coaches on the field and you know you have all the players out i'm looking forward i'm i'm looking what i'm looking for Ken, is all uh cohesiveness i'm looking for the team bonding and chemistry um not just one player standing out to say i'm the man True enough, I want I want everybody to be the man. In other words, take your ring, uh, take the ring, take the uh, tiger by by the neck, man. And, you know what I'm saying? And walking up and down the field. You know, I want to see the quarterback uh, competition. I really want to see uh, the improvement of Jacobian. Um, I, I I will I will admit uh, listening to you guys. Uh, I'm a little surprised, that, you know, at the push that really being put in by uh by Zai, you know, you know, and I have respect for that man because the young man haven't given up, you know, with the different, you know, they bring in many quarterbacks, but he's still fighting, so he at the top of the chart. So man, I'm looking forward to that quarterback battle. Uh, I'm looking to see uh the start of Quay Davis second goal at uh left tackle to see Kenny hold down the reins of being, you know, one of the elite offensive linemen. Uh, I want to see the the running back room. I want to see what kind of competition that Nate that, that, that Nate is bringing. Of course, we're not going to see Mr. Mulligan, but you know we'll see the rest of them. I want to see. I'm looking forward to seeing Zeke. Man, Zeke has I uh, has been one of my um has been one of my you know one one of the guys I always liked his game and admire and respect it because. The young man never complained. He just run hard. He always smiling. And when he did, when he did get his chance, he showed he made big of it. And he still was smiling and say, "Hey, all I needed was a chance." Uh, looking to see how well the, of course, the trenches are. That's gonna be the key to uh, winning most games. Uh, also, uh, with the defensive backfield and and uh, with the new uh, defensive coordinator to see how everybody, you know, we got Mr. Uh, got Robert in from Robert McDaniels. I want to see his play. So, man, that you know, with the defensive back room being as strong as it is, I mean, the players it is, and, and we pretty much loaded everywhere, man. Now I just want to see how that comes together and play out. So that's, I'm just looking for, the, you know, the complete game and to see who really want to, you know, to want, really want to be there and really take over, even with the wide receivers. I know he's really loaded. Catch the ball. Let's go. All right. Well, um, again, I, I stated, you know, on the previous show what I'm looking to, but it's a little bit of everything. But the main thing I'm keeping focus on, I know, the majority of our fans are going to clean the linebackers. I think they kind of go without saying, right? But I mean, 
Linebacker or quarterback. Or in quarterback. But I, I will say this. Let me get out early on this. People, do not go into the spring game looking to see a well or machine. That's That's not, right. You're not going to get it. I'm telling you that now. So right. there's no point expecting that because you're not going to get it, right? It's a spring, and you're going to take risk and do other things because, again, it's a glorified uh, scrimmage, basically. Right. So basically what we're talking about is well, things we want to see. I echo what TD says. You know, I'm looking forward. I, I forgot about Robert McDaniel. I wanted to actually see him, you know. Yep. And, 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 you know, see, you know, where he'll be at, how he'll be. Also, I just want to see the scheme. See what we're doing on defense. We got a new, new defensive coordinator. We're running for new things. I want to see Javance and see how he coaches. I want to see the D line coach and see how he coaches. I want to right. see what we do with our ends now because again, it's a different defense. How we're going to rush the passer? Look and see what our D tackles are doing. And then also, uh, like I said, I want to see what, see what we do. How we're going to utilize our tight ends now? What we're going to do with uh, with with the wide receivers? So again. Because it's going to be a new offense. It's a new defense. So outside of just looking at position groups, seeing what we're doing from a scheme standpoint, we know it's going to be vanilla. But even in the vanilla, what, are we, what formations are we using? What are we coming out of? You know what I'm saying? And then again, just to see the growth, I want to see the transition from last from the last game we saw in November with Jacoby to see how far he's progressed in this spring. And then Zai as well. You know, he's healthy now. Um because uh, I'm quite sure we never talked about it, uh, or did we, Ken? Because uh, that was in the summer when he got hurt. You oh. know, Zai. Oh, what's going on last spring? He got hurt. He got hurt. He got hurt, he got hurt in the spring, and then he got hurt. In the <laughs> that was in the spring. Excuse me. So again, just to see Zai healthy for a spring game, right? Just to see what that looks like. Um, so it's a lot, of, a lot of moving parts. So we can actually get into that there. What you got, Ken? Yeah. He got some Z's. <laughs> <laughs> he get it. He get it. Hey man, listen, bro. We already know, dog. I gotta say this, bro. It ain't often that I I take a L. I ain't, I ain't gonna win this one, dog. I'm gonna just tell you that right now. Well, I'm uh, glad Joe would come to I'm I, going well, well, getting here was important. You know why? Oh, I, yeah. I, I opened up with that. Um, but at the same time, man, I just trying to pack i i finished packing man like three in the morning had to be up at like five in the morning so it was it was kind of like that didn't wasn't able to really sleep had middle seats all the way home and just been kind of going ever since i look forward to getting in the bed so at the end of the day it's it's all it's okay i'm gonna shake through it but i do have some some things i do want to touch on because uh outside of just that i mean the spring game is pretty obvious man we I'm I just want to see I want to see Coach TC. That's what I'm looking at more than anything. I want to see Coach TC in year number two. Mm -hmm. We got a new coaching staff. I'm gonna be paying attention to the coaching staffs, their, their temperament. What is it that they emphasizing? Um scheme, you know what I'm saying? Um I want to see the differences between last year and this year. You know, what are the major differences? You know what I'm saying? Like, like for real, for real. Um, that's what I hope to see. I'm going to be paying attention to that. I don't I only hold a lot of rah-rah and y'all know how I am. I get annoyed with noise. Too much stuff going on. I kind of want to focus and lock in. That's what I'm looking forward to, man. And I just, I just want to see a great, I want the weather to be good. I want it to be a great turnout. I hope it's just a, it's a great day uh, for uh, football. And um, I'm excited about that, man. I, I want to see how many recruits we're going to have out there, what it's going to look like, and just how Coach going to make it happen. Because remember last time, the weather was a little shaky. Oh, it was very shaky. Yeah, it was just, shaky. Yeah, it was just a little shaky. Hopefully, we get some really good weather. It's project, projected to be a high of about 70. Yep, high to be out. It right now. Yeah, man, low of 43, something like that. So 45. I just, yeah, it's going to be a good day for football, man. Looking good, feeling good. The boom gonna be in in the place to be gonna be putting on for the for the, you know for the uh for the day and for the fans and uh we gotta come out and show our support man y'all y'all heard what Coach Smith Reed said you know let's not let, you know you only get one you only get one spring game so um we got the first game coming on a Thursday man and it's gonna be here 
Lord, man. It's already April. This is my birthday month, man. Yeah, this is the birthday month right here, man. 28 days. And it's it's crazy because, it, you know, shucks, man. Well, you know it, it'll be August and it'll be time to play some football. But you guys said it. I don't want to be redundant, man. I'm excited about it. We're going to talk about it again on Wednesday. Uh, but I did. I, I will say this, though. I want to spend the, the rest of my time on the, on the platform tonight. Cause like I said, I, I just I just want everybody to um I wanted to talk about Coach Reed because we did have her on. We're still building off that show. And we're going we got a donor reception coming up on Friday, which I hope we all are able to, to to attend. I did make the necessary communication to the right parties to say, hey, listen, we need KC 1400 Media Group to be present. And that includes multiple people. So uh, we're looking to make a donation, and that's what I mentioned. So hopefully we'll get that finalized tomorrow. Um, but everything that we've done, fam, uh, we've done it through collective efforts, man. And I just, TD, you talked about something. Remember the last show where Brother C. Lee was on this thing, and we had a lot of questions as to how could we do this, 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 and this, right? Bro, the next day I stumbled across this article, man. I want you to look at this right here. I'm going to drop this back. We still got the basketball donation open. I want y'all to see this, man. And this is Birmingham. Shout out to Big John, by the way, man. Big John. I want y'all to check this out, man, because I think this is so apropos to this platform and what we've done collectively uh, with this. With this, It says a team of black real estate developers make history with the $100 million project in Birmingham, Alabama, y'all. I, I I I cropped it. I cropped it out. I'm, it's gonna be quick, and I want to get our thoughts on this. Then we'll open this thing up to the to the chat. If anybody got anything, you guys are welcome to join us tonight. Man, y'all come on up. If you got anything you want to talk about, we can top it up with you. We got time, man. We got time today. We got time today. But it says a team of black real estate developers make history with a 100 million dollar project in Birmingham, Alabama. Now I see when we was in Birmingham, I thought that Birmingham was the perfect city that Jackson can model itself after. You know what I'm saying? Got a young African American mayor, just similar to Jackson. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bigger. Birmingham is bigger than Jackson, uh, and it's it's making some strides, man, in the, in the right direction um, with development. But check this out: hundred million dollar project. I say we want to thank the mayor and council for their support. It's transformational project, Cornell West, the director of development, innovation, and economic opportunity. It sends a message to the entire country that African-American and minority developers have a place in Birmingham. And we are aggressive and intentional about supporting their efforts. Green Meadow Apartment CEO Green Jersey, we, who is a former hood uh, field office director for the state of Alabama, is leading the project that is expected to create 2,000 construction jobs. 240 permanent jobs. The commercial area uh, will generate 500,000 in property taxes over the first three years. It's likely um, Lakeshore uh, Tiger Walk will be developed, a multi phase project that would include a single family, multi family senior housing, and for an estimated 900 residents, there are also, also plans uh, to, uh, to include a town center with a grocery store and a commercial and retail office spaces. Total investment in the project is said to be about 100 million. Birmingham mayor said the city council approved an ordinance authorizing the sale and development of approximately 222 acres of land, uh, Green Meadow, for 1.5 million, bro. The project's development team is, Af is all African-American, including the general contractors with over 2 billion to date. That is the largest transaction led by African-Americans in the city's history. This is a great day for the city of Birmingham, said mayor, not only because of the jobs the homes and economic impact, but because of the history that is being made. Now, why did I bring that up? Before, hey, before you do that, I'm gonna let you go, talk, ahead, go back to that. Uh, I'm not going to go there. I'll just, when you finish, but go back to that first slide. Go ahead and do your thing, because I'm going to highlight something when you're done. No, not that one, the, the next one. All right. No, the next one, when they first start talking. Right there. Go ahead and do your thing. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm no, gonna no, no, no. Go ahead. Talk. I want to see what you got to say. No, the only thing I was going to say is this is amazing, but out of everything that he said, because it's going to lead to the ending of what was said, right? What's the very last sentence? We are aggressive and, and intentional. intentional. That's the thing that jumped out at me, man. <clears throat> Did he, I only I thought about you because you asked a question to Brother C. Lee 
What do we do? And this is listen, this ain't got nothing to do with Jackson, Mississippi. This ain't got nothing to do with Jackson State. This ain't got nothing to do with nothing about what nothing we got going on. But what it is, what it, it is, it shows it can be done. It's just an example of when yes, when we decide that we want to collaborate. Say so what kind though? Hey, it's it's in there, Israel. It's it's gonna be state of the art. I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna research on it. It's gonna be state of the art. I trust me when I tell you. I'm gonna tell you something else. I was actually talking to Mika about to Mika about this today. Uh, listen to a preacher this morning to go with this. Actually, said something about you know, a fine line between capabilities and willingness. Mm. Right. So again, we 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 have dreams. We talk about doing stuff, so we know that we are capable of getting stuff done. And Jackson and any other place, any type of uh, you know urban area full of black folk, we have a capability. But what we lack is the willingness. Because wow. when you have a willingness, you have a will to get it done. And you know what you have? You do you know what you're utilizing when you have the will? Whenever you have the will, you have what? That means you're showing what? Intentionality. And you're being intentional mm -hmm. getting done. So they ain't just talking. They walking now, Jack. So 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 for somebody that may say, Well, 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 Ken, where are you getting at? Why'd you bring that up? This is just real estate. I mean, that's the fastest way to you know to 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 wealth in this country is real estate beyond the stock market, you know, but if you can get into the real estate game, I mean, it's a lot of money in there. You can really change your, the course of your life. But my point is this, um, it's rare. You see a lot of examples. Um, you have African-Americans that are all capable. They are, these are all real estate brokers. These are all real estate agents and investors. They got money already. So the individual um success of one another is is already pronounced they're already doing great by themselves but what it does show is is when they all decided now what it did not say was was that i didn't i didn't really get into all the meat and potatoes of the hierarchy who's over what you know katiti what'd you say on when uh, on, on friday putting that pride aside putting that ego aside and being able to come together and collaborate, that's how we're going to have to do it. Because when you get ready to really sit down, I mean, Jackson can be great just like that. But I, I tell you one thing that they had to do. You got to put down the side, the count of each other's pockets. You got to want that for the city. You got to want the same things and you got to be willing to do what it takes to make it happen. And um, we had a conversation recently, just last week after the show, just talking about we all want to see D.I. Love be great. We got to be willing to do the necessary work and to collaborate in that space. So, this is this this type. This is this is so minor, you know. Uh, we still taking donations, and that's in the midst of other things that are going on. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we've been preaching group economics on this platform on a very very small level, but the impact has been amazing. I go sit down with uh, someone at the university tomorrow um, to get receipts, like you know, just get tax per uh work tax paperwork you know what i'm saying for everything that we want to account for and we're talking about 70 to eighty thousand dollars in just funds that we all kind of pulled together for various different things and when i was going through those receipts td and zo i was just like holy smokes man some of the stuff i had forgot that we did you know what i'm saying just the amount of stuff that we've done and it's just like, man, and it ain't about just us talking about what we've done, because I know that kind of burns in some people's ears when we say that. At the end of the day, we're just talking about the, the capability and willingness to get active. Like you said, willingness versus capability or however y'all said it, that's where we are, man. I thought that was so encouraging because I'm just like, damn, Birmingham, three hours away. It's a it's an African-American led city. It's very similar to what Jackson State should model itself after. Zoe always talk about men's and women's basketball, potentially looking at something like a Gonzaga, one of those mid-major programs. Like, why can't we focus on something that's based off of that and let that be the model and just continue to build, build, and build, and build? But I just thought that was a great example of what we were just demonstrating. Go ahead, bro. I was going to say, to add to that point, you know, whether it's your own personal life. Look, I'm 45 years old. I have no ego if I'm going into an arena, right? 
and in my own personal life, if I see someone striving and thriving in something, there's no shame in me saying, let me use that as a template to model myself after. Right. Because, again, you know, they are thriving in an area that I want to be in. There's no shame and no ego in that. And you can do the same thing, whether it's an institution and say, hey, we want to use them as a template, use them as a model. Now, granted, we have our own thing and we can put our own little twist to it. But there's nothing wrong with having something to model yourself after. There's no shame in that as well. Same thing with the city of Jackson. And I love that when you said they can, because we can actually use Birmingham as a model to say, you know, why can't Jackson to be the best version of itself, you know, use Birmingham as a model because we can actually grow to that. But also, you know what those men prove today and what they're saying? I mentioned capability versus willingness. But the other thing that it shows is what those black men doing what they do believe there's value in Birmingham. Yeah, they do. Birmingham. Yeah, Birmingham is a majority black city. And I always say black people devalue black things. Well, those men are proving with their actions that there is value there. And they made sure to actually say that in their press release as well. So again, kudos to them. I didn't even know this until this evening. I'm actually I'm motivated. I'm proud. And I would love for my city, my hometown, to let this light a fire under their ass and get something done. Also, another thing, do you see the verbiage from the mayor with regards to the city council? That's something else that the city of Jackson could thrive to have. Because again, everybody has to grab their piece of the rope and total and, and total line. Everybody does. That's and 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 that's what you see. Thoughts on that. Um I think this is a I think it's a magnificent thing that they're doing in the fact that you have a bunch of gentlemen come together with like mind and who has become successful and decide to you know collaborate to bring other people along because things like this also create jobs, you know, yes. in, in, in many different um genre of working. And the thing with that, man, um, it takes one, it took one or two to start, to start this, start that ball to rolling. And they had to, they had to have seen something, you know, for them to come up with that thought process and say, okay, let's get together and do this. That's what it's going to take, man. It's going to take somebody with, um, with a vision along with some pockets who were able to pull people together and self how to get out the way. And a lot of things that I've learned about dealing with business, period, man, no matter what, whether it's the street level or it's a corporate le level, got to have some form of transparency. Yep. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That, I mean, that, that, that that's key. You know, we always make fun of the building fund and the dough knob or light bulb don't get, re uh, you know, replaced. So people stop giving. They, I mean, that that that, that fifty dollars they were giving go down to twenty five, go down to fifteen, go down to ten, go down to five, and you know because they don't see any changes being made. So one thing that this platform has done uh, has offered transparency, which would allow people to you know continue to give, continue to do. The thing about it is more people have to be in tune how to get on board how to get to, how to how to get an understanding and somebody with some with some leadership or some big pockets or whatever can reach out if they're curious about what we have going on instead of being in a situation where we're like okay well D D Joker gaining too much cloud or we don't want this to happen or want that to happen call in and just say hey man what what is it that you got going on and that's that prideful part and that's really coming together the problem here we get we have too many people and I'm not just talking about even Jackson State. I'm just talking about as a whole, man. Right. Who you know, saying who don't want to see the growth of everybody. We have this, I always call it a see me, you know, mentality to where can, if I'm riding good, if I'm looking good and you praising my, my, my shoes, my suit, my clothes, where I live, but I bring you up to my status, then I have no one to praise me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I think, again, I think it's wonderful what they're doing. 
And like I said, it, it started with, you know, one or two minds or maybe a firm or someone who said they wanted to do it, to, you know, to develop something. And, may, and I'm not saying that's not going on here in Jackson. I'm not saying not going on in Jackson State, you know, um, but when it does, you know, they make it known. In Madison, hey, they're going to put a top golf. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're about to do this. They're about to do that. I mean, these people make it transparent. What's about to happen? It might not come for another two or three years, but it, they, they put it in. They put in the seed in your mind. This is what's about to happen, and that's what we need to start doing more. So, whether they're saying this is none of your business, just donating seed. That's just my point. Man, that was spot on, bro. Yeah, but kudos right. to them, and I hope it go very well, very successful, and you know maybe they can put some stuff out there to model that. Um, that you know everyone can learn for sound like um sound like a, a, a another wall street doesn't man it definitely sound like a black wall street coming i mean that that's some pretty powerful stuff man i thought it was super dope i was like whoa my mouth dropped when i saw it i was like man we got to talk about this tonight at least mention it just shout out to them hey cuz how you doing td i was just thinking how quiet uh you used to be uh uh keeping all this knowledge in LA. <laughs> <That's me. laughs> hey, hey, we gotta we gotta extract it. We gotta extract it, man. Get it out of them. That's what's up, man. I love that. Thank you. Appreciate that comment, cuz. Thank you. That's my cousin right there, man. She good people. She damn good people. That's what I meant when I said the economics has always been our great tool for our liberation struggle. That's absolutely right, brother C. Lee. I mean, that's 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 so spot on. Going to the final four with eight players, hell of a coaching job. Can't nothing about no damn UConn. And you know what? But I do want to say this though. Jackson State lost to a team that's in the final four, and we had the best showing against any team they played. Yeah, I mean USC battling right now. Paige Becker's looking like a damn uh, NBA player right now. She ain't looking like no WNBA. She looking like Juana man out there. Just saying, just man. Saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, she got 28 right now. My goodness, 28 and 10. Mm, Seven consecutive 20 point game. That girl gets a, I'm telling you, she's a bucket, bro. And see, and, and, and that's, and it's players like that that I be talking about. I was talking about in the beginning. And she do it with, with little to no effort, man. It's just, you know, even with Kaylin, I mean, it just come natural. Boy, little KT Dub just dropped the bar. A lot want to be kings, not enough king makers. God dang. Come on in with that wisdom, big bro. Said Atlanta looked like looked at Harlem and DC as their model of growth. Okay. And now it has, man. But we, you know, Jackson, Jackson has a great potential, man. Uh it, it's 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 an interesting thing, man. It really it's a secret is. society, bro. I mean, you, you don't know who making these moves and who doing that. It, it just happens a lot of time. And again, if we were to just really come out and be, you know. Yeah, Blue. <laughs> that chick here is a baller, bro. For real, man. Right. Oh. The L was just missed two free throws. 52 oh, seconds left to go in the game. USC down by nine. Oh, Going snap. Blue. Well, make that Juju finna go to the line. Yeah, they're going to lose this one. It's, a hard, it's, it's hard to get Fair Street back to where it used to be. Jackson doesn't have money like these other cities, too. And, bro, we just – the potential was there, man. Uh, there's a lot of things we could talk about to stop us from being where we need to be. But um, my, my, you know, just maybe. So, yeah. so me, I don't want to open up this can of worms, but I will. I will ask this question based on that comment. Right. So, how would it develop if gentrification was to come along? It'll have the money to come from somewhere. Then. Well, the money to come from you know the people that actually that's coming in with it. Yeah, that don't look like the natives. <laughs> Just saying, you know, there's still some stuff going on, man. And I, I can speak to some more just on a personal level. I won't get into it, but it's um, 
Jackson, I think that's coming though. As much as I, as, you know, as much as we frown up on it, it's coming. It's it's already happening in certain aspects of the city. We just have to be prepared for the full fledged, um, you know, rollout. But it's definitely coming. I say we about five years out. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of those guys. I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, that's an awesome thing, man. That's an awesome thing. And you know what? Here's the next thing. Uh, Ken, they, they, I don't know how far along, um, is this project, you know, but I hope they see it all the way through. That's going to be the next, you know, that's going to be the next thing. You know, you have to finish it. If they started, they need to finish it. Don't get halfway through building, you know, three or four brick columns and stop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just follow it through, finish it up. I would love to see it. Who's better, Caitlin Clark or Paige Beckers? Um, uh, natural born score is actually Paige Beckers. Uh, but overall, like, like score, I would have to say, oh man, shooter, Caitlin Clark, without question. But score, man, Paige is is, is serious, man. Her skill set is is unbelievable. I think if they play one on one, I think Paige Beckers will give her that work. But she's so skilled, man. Not saying that Caitlin is not. It's just, you know, Caitlin is 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 a, is, a, is a, or she scores from deep. But my goodness, Paige can score from every level. You know what I mean? She don't really shoot that three like that. But uh, she can make three when needed. They only up seven, 23 seconds to go. This game looks to be in the route. Hell, if they'd have made their free throw, they'd be up at 11 right now. So, yeah. I agree with Brianna. Um, yeah, that fundamental that Paige has makes it different, man. And then, and then she she actually, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say Kaylee don't seem more of a team player because uh, she does. But it seems like Paige is more in tune. With you know what I'm saying, it, it it's I want to say Kaylin selfish either because I don't think she is, but you, you know I, I you know it just um like Paige you know make sure that her other I mean it just seems like she's just more in tune with the team rather than you know because she's not getting the spotlight that Kaylin getting either, so maybe that's what it is. But I like I, I like that. <laughs> hey, Jay Saw said we all are gamecocks here on out. I mean, I the expectation is to see Don Staley and her gamecocks win the national championship. Um, they had a close one just recently. Oh, Juju, you gotta shoot that. What the hell did you pump fake for? Okay, five point game, 17 seconds to go. Yikes. Can I ask, uh, let's see, this is a great, Lillian Hemp here. Can I ask why gentrification is seen as a bad thing? The neighborhoods are being cleaned up and people are moving back. It's a good thing. That's the question. That That's a, that's a great question. Matter of fact, I'm going to open this up. Hey, I'm going to drop the link. If you want to come up, uh, Brother C. Lee, if you want to jump in on this, um, feel free to. We got about 10 minutes to go. We're going to shut it down after an hour and a half. So I ain't going past hour and a half. I'm or else I'm gonna be off the screen and snowing. I'm telling so, you that right now. So look, the uh, they released the ratings for the uh, NCAA football, uh, the video game. They got Shadur and Travis both with a 99 overall rating. That's because Dion been lobbying. By the way, man, did y'all see? I don't know if y'all saw this, but Shador. That boy got money, man. That boy just bought that cyber, that's that 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 Tesla cyber truck, the little the ugly looking truck, man. Hundred thousand dollars, man. That man bought a hundred. That's hundred thousand base model. Oh yeah, Debbie Mario, what's up, man? You coming to the spring game? I need that escort, man. <laughs> And Mike, you'll be doing that thing, man. So, so I'll touch this, I'll touch on this real quick. Uh, for one, the thing that gentrification 
it it just it I think the the biggest thing about it is is that there is a upside to it. Um usually gentrification is an attack on the demographic of a particular area. Um that area is predominantly a particular race. In this particular instance, we're talking about black, we're talking about minority communities. And what happens is is that in those communities, it's a bad thing when you when you um drain those communities of resources and um you're able to turn around and and yes it in theory it's good for the city because aesthetically um uh economically it's a it's it's a it's a good move in the right direction however um it doesn't speak to gentrification has an ugly side to it it does not speak to the other side of the displacement of the natives of that particular area. It's a it's a continuous, it's basically a it's a it's a it's a pronounced war between the haves and the have nots. I have, you don't, therefore you gotta go. And I get to just walk into your space. I'm gonna beautify it. I'm gonna make it look better. Of course, and the city is gonna be you know what I'm saying great as a result of it, but nevertheless, um, it's still when you factor in the historical empirical data that uh, that is that is against you know these African Americans in our particular instance, black folks who who have dealt with discriminatory practices as far as housing, uh, being denied loans, being denied the opportunity. Uh, you're being locked out of that potential. Um, think about it. What if those um, minority or those black folk who was in that community uh, were able to be educated, I guess, and provided as those same resources uh, to be able to capitalize on their community? You can make the case that maybe some may, maybe they wouldn't. But my point is, is that... Um, it's almost like I get to walk into it's, it's real life monopoly. I get to walk into your space, take over your space. You know, I'm going to do what I want to do with it. And then you're not going to be able to come back because you're not going to be able to afford it. But you never speak to the displacement of that community of the people that was once in that area. Where are they going to go? So you're going to throw So basically, by default, you're pushing them into the area that you want them to go into by making it only affordable to go into those areas, uh, which can lead to various different um, issues that comes as a result of that, various different issues that comes as a result of that. And it's a, it's a much deeper issue than just, okay, the be beautifying of an area. Um, hey, Sharetta, how you doing, sis? So, so yeah. There's levels to the answer. There's a lot that you can you can speak to with it, but that's just the surface of that. Y'all want to jump in there real quick? Just take a stab at it. I left the link open. Let me get to Brother C. Lee. What, what brother? I see he posted. What did he say? Well, yeah, by definition, gentrification includes various redlining policies, which is what I mentioned, that prevent black folks from getting loans to invest in businesses, improve their homes, to renovate them themselves. That's absolutely right. So you're going to strip me of the opportunity to do the very thing that you're trying to do and then those resources that you you need to do what it is, you're going to be afforded those resources because a lot of those folks that are coming into that area, you got to they don't like you got to you got to ask yourself, how do they have those resources to do that? And a lot of them, you know. For various different ways, and they're able to partner and invest and do what they do, you know what I'm saying? So. I'll let y'all take a stab at it, man. We'll finish up on this question and then we'll get up out of this thing. Five minutes. What y'all got on this? Go ahead, TD. Uh, to be honest with you guys, I don't, I don't have, I don't have much on it. I agree wholeheartedly with what Ken said. He made some great points and he broke, he, he broke it down uh, about as well, you know, as it could. 
but you know that's that, that's a lot of time how you know we end up with um you pushing all people out that's how you end up with hoods and projects yes, as, as, as you call them and you still left the fiend for yourself and like we mentioned about it before you know when you when you got a situation like that and everybody fending for themselves you definitely going to have high levels of crime and so Man, now now you're alleviating that not only did you take the spot now you're putting them in the spot where they're gonna you know eventually fade themselves out then what so like you said there are many levels to it um and again i think you did an awesome job of breaking it down man i mean even when you think about it though the advancement of uh that that, that community if you are a person that just wants to see the city look good then in your mind you're like who gives a damn who gets the money who gets the credit or who gets the shine or whatever. But think about it. That person that bought that community, bought it probably pennies on the dollar. They invested in it. They have the resources to do what, you know, the people that were currently there would have loved to have done it. And then one thing you don't also think about when it comes to gentrification is, is that there are not, that's just not just black people who don't understand money. That's not just black people who doesn't, um, haven't done it the right way you also factor in elderly people who have worked their whole entire lives to uh set up their retirement and their own fixed incomes and they're in a house that they've been in for forever and a day they live comfortably and then you come in and you displace them knowing damn well that they don't have a a, a living wage and a living income to to be able to allow them to afford to live somewhere else you know, you're going to push them out and all that good stuff. And that, I'm just saying, there's not saying that that's just one size fits all, but that's the that's the majority of that. You know, it's stuff like that, man. And then, two, the people who invest in that community are going to see astronomical levels of uh, profits and wealth that's no longer going to be afforded to the community that was once dwelling there or the community that is dwelling there. It goes towards the people who are able, who have the resources to the victor goes as falls, right? So what you have is a perpetual, consistent um, um, influx and and just continuous build one of classism. The gap gets wider, and now if I take you out of your space, you got to go somewhere else. It's a simple thing, like a lab rat, man. You keep pushing people into a space with no resources, no healthy food, no good grocery stores. You put a bunch of fast food restaurants over there. You're going to have health problems. You're going to have all type of obesity. You're going to have all types of problems that's going on in that community. And hunger leads to crime. Yes, it does. Everybody got a belly, man. Three times a day, they got to eat food. When that belly ain't ain't being fed, it's gonna lead to some various different acts and activities, man. Just saying, can't put people in the same community with no resources, and then you just take whatever they felt like they did have something, man. Just think about it, you know. You come over and take. That's why people were saying what they were saying about that Jack State. You're not gonna just be able to walk up over there and take our school like that, man. Just tell us, you know, it's all, you know, we we finna just do something different. Oh, no, you're gonna have a fight on your hand. So, anywho, that's my take on that. Um, but it's actually a great question because in some instances, what you're thinking about, maybe Lillian, is like, okay, I'm in the, I'm in it, I may be in a community that's predominantly black. I'm dealing with crime, I'm dealing with all different types of things, I'm dealing with lack of resources. Okay, okay. Then what I do is is uh, okay. You got this these investors that come in and invest in the area, you know what I'm saying? And they they renovate the place, make it look all pretty, but you can no longer live there anymore. It's pretty, but you can't afford to live there no more because your income was not of that mind, you know, not of the same thing. So, well, and in in in, in this case as well, I mean, the surrounding cities are pretty uh, pretty expensive too. Man, Andre, that's a great point. You're right, TD. 
Oh, man, this is powerful here. This is a great point. You can't go pro-black if you don't support the working class. Displacing people just so you can say the area looks better ain't the way to go. You can add resources without displacement. I'm telling you, the displacement is the ugly side of it, man. I saw it. Somebody said, like, Deion Sanders, he clearly knows he is a resource, but he has the mindset to continue to appeal and seek validation from others. So he took himself and other resources from a predominantly black space. That's absolutely correct. It's absolutely correct. Hey, man, he did what he had to do. He doing what he doing. His his mission is about his son, not sons. His son, that his son is Shador. Shador is a golden goose. Shador is why he's doing what he's doing. And when Shador enters the draft, you're not going to see Deion Sanders enduring the shit that he's dealing with at Jack. I mean, at Colorado. But speaking of, though, we talked about Coach Tamika Reed. We open it up with that. I mean, you know, you got a coach, another coach. You know, Coach Deion Sanders got hired from Colorado, to Colorado from Jackson State. And, uh, you know, we got a potential to have another coach. We got a whole staff of football coaches that got – man got a great greater opportunities in other spaces man so what that tells you is is that uh our coaches should be able to sell jackson state because i jackson state is is definitely a, a hotbed for 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 professional talent this brother c lee gonna join us there what's up brother c lee i mean he he, he like zo um uh, like his man zo looked like me just a minute ago we're gonna get on out of here we're gonna let brother c lee close us out go ahead doc if you're talking, I can't hear you. Go out and come back in, Brother Seeley. Said if, if the people refuse to invest in the area, then how can it project? Okay, it doesn't solve the root problem. It just moves it. That's right. If, and not even so much as, and, and it ain't even always about us not, us. And I'm not saying that you're saying it this way. It's not always us refusing to. We don't have the ability to. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm going into a bank trying to get some resources, I just ran into that recently, trying to invest, trying to get into business, trying to do that type of stuff. Guess what happens? Great credit, no debt, great uh, down payment, got all the stuff you need, and you run into a situation, the potential investors or people who, working with us td found out we you know look how we look and next thing you know now they find trying to figure out a reason to not uh, give you what it is that you want i'm telling you that's a real thing i'm not getting into what exactly i'm talking about but i'm telling you i dealt with that personally recently so it's still going on trust me when i tell you still goes on but you know Brother C. Lee, you got anything you want to come on back up? If you do, we'll, we'll have you on, and then we'll let you close them out. Close us out, man. As long as Zoe is talking, he is good. <laughs> Zoe, they said you got to start back talking, bro. Trust me. I ain't going to judge him because I was just there, and trust me when I tell you. That's tough. Brother C. Lee, can you hear me? Man, whatever. What did happen? You own, but you, you you talking, we can't hear you. You might have to unplug and plug back up. Camera work. Oh, man, see the in the Delta. He's in the Delta at a poor right, reading thing, so. But then <laughs> that might be it, huh? Yeah, man. I'm finna, get ready to be, I'm finna get ready to be doing some poetry with my eyelids. Exactly, exactly. We got we got to get C C Lee on the slick. Yeah, we gonna We're going to hold off one more time and try to get Brother C. Lee on here, man. Let him close us out. After that, we done, man. This is a brief night uh, on this show. Again, we'll be back Monday. Uh, still working on a special guest. 
Uh, we'll have that released on tomorrow, man. We'll get it out there to you guys, man. Looking forward to it. Oh, man. You can't down. All right, we're going to try it one more time. Brother C. Lee. Well, you sound like you, I can hear you, but you, you sound like you're way away from the phone. Uh, you ain't a rat hole. I can hear you, but you low, low. Oh, one second. Hold on. Let me try one more thing. I'm, I'm, hey, look here. I'm in a. <laughs> he's a, yeah, he, he's a, he got a, some poetry reading or something he got to do tomorrow. So he's in, uh, somewhere in the Delta. See. You out there where the internet don't work. <laughs> we're gonna try one more time if that don't work we'll have him on hey brother we can always bring it back up on monday i mean on uh wednesday and we can go from there man again man uh basketball donation uh women's basketball donation is still open man you can donate to the the cash app the paypal the zale hey listen we still got 450 in the room man Everybody send a donation in, man. Let's let's run this thing up. We're gonna we're gonna present a check to the uh uh to hopefully the code read uh for the donors reception. You know what I'm saying? We'll see how this week play out. The expectation is for Coach Reed to stay at Jackson State. But and where's that and where's that gonna be? Is is that gonna be in a physical place? I mean, what what is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Friday. Um, Friday or okay. Yeah, I'll get a I'll get all the information for you, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said he's in a B. <laughs> he's in a you know, hotel, man. So, oh, you in Itabina? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's old with you, guy. It's old with you, OG. Yeah, we're gonna let that. We're gonna let that one go. All you had to say was Itabina. It was old with. <laughs> Told okay. you, so out there. Hey, but look, man. Hey, brief show. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and join the channel. We need. We're trying to grow our membership. If you are a platinum member, we do have an exclusive platinum chat. You get discounts off all merch we got some more merch coming down the pipe soon hey uh go ahead and uh go to this website kc1400media.com go buy up all the Ur mulligan t-shirts we still got some inventory out there galen you said you needed a small i got i know i got a small and white so definitely go out there and check that out man let's see lee We're going to call it a night, OG. We'll try it again on, on Wednesday if you're available, man. But, TD, I'm done, man. I'm going to get some sleep, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good good, good talking with you, bro. We'll get up. Talking nation. Good night.